Artificial intelligence. You know, the very words sound a little scary. You know, they even made a creepy movie and they called it artificial intelligence. And yet artificial intelligence, or more precisely machine learning, can solve a lot of problems that are difficult or uneconomic or even flat impossible to solve with conventional computers. Okay, let's explain why. In a conventional computer, the first step to telling a computer how to solve a problem, well, that's to solve it yourself first. And then you reduce the solution to a set of simple steps that the computer can follow. The computer can follow those steps just as you gave them over and over and really very quickly too. And that system works great for accounting and networking and machine control. You know, anything we can describe using math we can reduce to a set of simple steps and just let a computer handle the rest. But there are classes of problems that aren't so easily reducible to an algorithm. Now think about driving. When you see a stop sign, you stop. Simple. But how did you recognize the stop sign? I mean, can you create a set of simple steps that could lead a computer to produce an output that says, hey, I see a stop sign. Well, that turns out to be a really hard problem, and lots and lots of very smart people have tried to solve it. Yes, the sign is red, and the letters are white, and the sign is a particular shape. But can we count on the background being a particular color or a texture? Is the sign always perfectly straight? Maybe it's damaged or defaced. Is it still recognizable? Okay, what if instead we had a system we could just train by showing lots of pictures of stop signs and just say, this is what a stop sign looks like. And then once deployed, upon encountering a stop sign, the system could report, you know, I'm 89.7% sure that there's a stop sign up ahead. Maybe I should stop. Well, that's essentially what a machine learning system does. During the training phase, it ingests many examples of the target and uses these examples to refine a model. During the identification phase, given some data set, it applies that model to evaluate the likelihood of whether the data set represents one of its known targets. The MAX 78000 is a new device that incorporates two conventional CPU cores, an ARM Cortex-M4 and a RISC-V core, along with a convolutional neural network to handle machine learning tasks. Now, by combining powerful conventional cores with a neural network, we can tackle problems in an embedded space that would have been impractical using conventional CPU cores alone. Well, today we're going to explore one example, demodulating an AFSK signal in a noisy environment. Now, FSK, frequency shift keying, is one of the oldest methods of getting data across an audio channel. Now, simply put, you select two audio tones, assign one of those tones to represent a 1-bit and the other tone to represent a 0-bit, and off you go. The old Bell 103 and Bell 202 modems were FSK modems operating at 300 and 1200 bits per second, respectively. FSK works in the radio frequency world as well. You can vary the frequency of the carrier and detect that variation at the receiver to recover the data. But another method works as well. Just tie the output of the modem to the input of a voice band transmitter. This method, audio frequency shift keying, or AFSK, is simple to implement and it's found use in a lot of applications, one of which is widely used in amateur radio. Automatic Packet Reporting System, or APRS. Now, in APRS, the transmitter keeps track of its position using GPS or some other geolocation service, and from time to time, it formats a data packet that contains its call sign and its position and other information. Then it turns on its transmitter, usually a narrowband FM transmitter running in the 2-meter band, and transmits the data packet using the Bell 202 frequencies. Receiving stations can then decode those frequencies, unpack the packet, and discover the call sign, the location, and other information about the transmitting station. Bell 202 frequencies, 1200 Hz for a 1 and 2200 Hz for a 0, 
are well within the audio passband of any transceiver designed for voice communications. And transmitting the tones? Well, that's easy. The incoming bitstream can directly select one or the other of the tones. But now receiving the tones, that's a little problematic. How can you distinguish the tones, especially in a noisy environment? Well, the earliest demodulators used bandpass filters, one at 1200 and the other at 2200 hertz. Route each filter output to an envelope detector, compare the detector outputs, and you've recovered a reasonable copy of the digital stream. Noise that lies outside the pass bands of the two filters is not even an issue. It's rejected. Now, later demodulators just take the entire audio band and present it to a digital signal processor. The DSP can implement adaptive filters and perform processing that would be difficult to achieve in the analog world. Pretty much all modern AFSK modems use some version of a DSP to do their work. But could machine learning provide another way? I mean, what if we simply showed a machine learning model lots of examples of 1 bits and 0 bits encoded as AFSK and then turned it loose on the problem? Well, that's what we're going to explore today. Now, designing a machine learning solution to a problem is a little like designing a microcontroller solution to a problem. In a conventional microcontroller, you start with an algorithm, reduce the algorithm to code, test the code to see if it behaves properly, and then debug the code and test again in a kind of a loop. Now, in a machine learning tool, you start with a model. Depending on the nature of the data that you're trying to analyze, the model will be different. And in our case, we're analyzing time samples of a continuous audio waveform. So we've built a machine learning model that's suitable for that task. Next, you express the model in code, just like you express an algorithm in code when you're programming a conventional CPU. Okay, so far, so good. But the next step is where conventional CPU cores and machine learning really diverge, because instead of debugging the code that expresses your algorithm, the machine learning tool begins pulling in data samples from your example set and applying them to your model, attempting to predict which target is represented. Now, in our case, it pulls in a SNP of an audio waveform and tries to predict whether that SNP contains a data transition or not. If it's correct, the path through the model that led to the correct prediction is strengthened. But if the prediction is wrong, then that path is weakened. Now, once the training is done, the model, complete with the weights of each path through the model, is compiled and sent to the MAX 78000. Now we can send sample data into the MAX 78000 and it generates a value that indicates how likely the input is to represent a signal transition from one frequency to the other. And in that way, the microcontroller knows where the signal edges are and it can compute the values that comprise the bitstream. Well, yes. I mean, that's all very interesting, but does it work? This is the MAX 78000 featherboard. It contains, of course, a MAX 78000 plus a MAX 9867 codec, a power management IC, a digital microphone, a camera, and all connections to the onboard peripherals to the MAX 78000. Hook up a stock OLED display and pff, we're ready to go. Now, APRS transmits its data as HDLC frames. You don't need to know anything about HDLC except that each frame is, uh, well, framed with known starting and ending sequences, and each frame contains a CRC error check. In that way, we know if we're receiving valid data, and more to the point, if our machine learning demodulator is, you know, actually working. Now, to test it, we have an actual recording of APRS traffic on 144.390 MHz. That's the default APRS frequency for North America. We'll apply power to the featherboard and start playback. Now, in APRS, there is no concept of collision avoidance, so you're going to hear lots of stations transmitting over each other. And when that happens, the HDLC frames of both stations are going to get corrupted but there'll be lots of stations that get a complete message through. And the white noise you hear in between modulated audio signals, well, that occurs when there is no station transmitting. 
That LED blinks red when the neural network senses a 1 to 0 or 0 to 1 transition, and it blinks green when the microcontroller detects a properly formatted HDLC frame. On the display, the top left number changes with each correctly received message. It's the number of bits in the current message. The number on the right is the number of bits in the longest message that's been received so far. And the bottom number is the total number of bits received without error. So, the answer to whether or not this technique works is yes, it does work and it works well. But as to the question of whether this is a particularly good application of the technology, probably not. The truth is, a small signal processing core can probably provide better efficiency and get the same levels of performance as we're seeing here. But look, here's the point. We're doing no pre-processing of the audio. It's coming into a plain old codec, getting sampled at 16-bit resolution, 24,000 samples per second, and then straight into the neural network. The neural network is making 1,200 inferences per second, feeding the results to the microcontroller core, where it detects the HDLC framing and computes the frame CRC. No. The point isn't that we've made some amazing breakthrough in decoding 50-year-old FSK signals. The point is that we did it using an inference engine in real time with high degrees of accuracy and precision. So now, what problems do you have that don't admit to easy algorithmic solution? Why not see if machine learning is right for your application? Just go to Maxim's website right now and search for Max 78000. There, you'll be able to order a Max 78000 EV kit or the Max 78000 featherboard we saw in action today. And you can download the device data sheet and review all the app notes our engineering team has written to make your journey into machine learning easy. One more thing. You can review Maxim's GitHub repository at this address. There, you'll find all the material you need to learn about AI as implemented on Maxim's Max 78000 and how to add machine learning to your next project. It's the best way to discover what the power of machine learning can do for you.